Hello everyone. Um, today I want to talk about how to use PowerPoint as a great screencasting tool for educational purposes. Um, the good thing with PowerPoint is there are so many functions within it and then you are able to have videos and audios embedded with it and then um, so it's great for both synchronized and asynchronized learning. My computer's default setting is in Chinese, but all the functions and the keys are the same with English versions. So just try to locate the items you need in the same spot and then you'll find it. So I'll start with talking about some features of PowerPoint that can help education. Um, as you can see here, when you type in the topics in the right corner from the general section, there's a design tool which will automatically generate different themes for you to set, to set up as your topics and the background of your PowerPoint. Um, here, this is new slides. So you can make a new slide by clicking this button on this little song here. There are also different options for you to choose the layout of your slide and how do you want it. Um, so basically you just type in whatever you want, your topics, your titles, and then the contents that you want to type in for your slides. So this is an example slide that I did. I'll talk about cognitive flow theory. And then when I talk about it, I'll use the signaling principles, which is um, pointing out the highlighting or make it into the subheadings, the items that we need to learn. Um, I can also do highlighting or change it into different colors. Um, to the key terms and then just give a brief definitions or descriptions about it. And then one good thing about PowerPoint is it does have a little text box in the bottom as a note for you, the educators, to type in any keywords you want to talk about. Just kind of remind yourself um, for your own use. Um, but as we learn about the, this format, maybe may cause cognitive overload since there's just plain tests. And as we learn about, it's better to learn with a dual channeling theory that we can just having the pictures, the key terms, and then explain um, the definitions in narrative, which is the modality principles that we learn about in class. So in order to introduce cognitive flow theory, I can um, find pictures about it and then highlighting the terms intrinsic load, demand load, extraneous load, and then use narrative to talk about what are they and what would they affect our study. As I said before, there is audio recordings and videos that um, educators can embed it into to help learning. So to do that, you just need to click insert. And then here there's the video section that you can insert your video from the device, from the movie database or online. So for instance, if I want to embed it, this YouTube video, I just go to YouTube, find the video that I need, copy the link, and then um, click online video, uh, insert the video, and then it will pops up and you just insert it by clicking this button. And your video will show up. And for audio recording, um, same thing, you go to inserts and then there's audio 
and then you can either have insert your existing video, audio, or recording it right now. And then by the time you finish it, it will have this little label, a little microphone label with the audios in it. Um, the other thing with tools that PowerPoint provide is slice transition, which is this column and then it can have different transitions for your slides um, as well as animation so right next to your transition is animation and then you can just click into um, the pictures or the text that you wanted to show in animation format so this is my test in animation format um, So the one good thing about transition and animation is it did somehow spring a focus for a student to pay attention to um, so that they can be more aware of what you want to highlight. But one thing that you need to be careful is um, about avoiding to cause to increase the ex generous load. Like we learned before, music, any unrelated information and transition and animation will cause cognitive overload. So just be precise and keep the idea of less is more in mind when you're using PowerPoint as an educational tools to bring in essential information and try to remove any irrelevant material so that student can have a minimal um, knowledge intake in order to prevent causing a cognitive overload.